much. Amazing, amazing work. Our last speaker is uh, a little bit of a treat. Uh, we've got uh, Dr. Josefa Adamali, who is actually a pulmonologist, um, and he's going to be coming to us from London today. Uh, he's a pulmonologist with special interest in lung fibrosis. He's completed his BSc in physiology and MSc in anatomy and cell biology uh, in McGill and did medicine at the University of College, the University College of Dublin. He's got a fellowship in interstitial lung disease at uh, the Brompton. Now, he's a consultant in respiratory medicine with special interest in ILD at Southmead Hospital in Bristol. He's a physician and lecturer for the University of Bristol and uh, a researcher in lung fibrosis. We uh, had the great privilege of working with uh, Dr. Adamali, with Jose Fabai, uh, at London Ashura this year where, where uh, he was instrumental in uh, in our disease uh, prevention camps. And uh, it was a tremendous honor and privilege to work with him. Uh, with the Dua and Raza Mubarak of Akamola, uh, he has been, he's cu currently undertaking a project uh, and that he's gonna tell us about today, which uh, deals with Kidmat in Iraq, in Karbala. So we'll be sharing some initiatives and opportunities uh, and I hope we have him on the line uh, Doctor, yeah, Doctor yeah, Josefa Adamali, you're on, Hi. my friend. Um, have you got the slides? Can you see the slides? We do. We've got your slides, sir. Uh, fantastic. Uh, well, thank you so much. Last but not least, uh, just wanted to say uh, enormous thanks to Safi Burhani Medical Association uh, America uh, for kindly inviting uh, me. Um, one of the Khidmat Gudas of the Safi Burhani Medical Association UK and Europe uh, to talk about some exciting work that we have been doing in Iraq. Um, I think this is day I've been popping in and out has been amazing. And I hope this initiative uh, next year gets bigger and wider and we're included uh, uh, contributing as well as participating. Um, I'm really grateful for the organizers for doing this. So I just want to start off with a disclaimer. Um, what I'm about to present uh, cannot be attributed uh, to one individual or organization. Uh, this is fully orchestrated with the Dua Mubarak of Huzurana Tawlam Rashi. I mean, this uh, barakat one has reaped has been through the amazing uh, perseverance of the Duat Mutlaqeen in Iraq. We should be enormously indebted to Aqa Sayyidina Ta'ah Safadin, Sayyidina Muhammad Burhanuddin, Ridwanullah Ali, Ne Aqa Sayyidina Muhammad Al Sayyidin. The reason is because they have seen, uh, sown the seeds of love and affection in the hearts of the Iraqi people. So the work we have about, I'm about to tell you, has been made ten times easier because they not don't look at you only as a, a physician, but a follower of the Sultan al Bahra, Aqa Sayyidina Muhammad al Sayyidin, and they remember Aqa Sayyidina Muhammad Burhan al and Sayyidina Ta'ala al Sayyidin. Wholeheartedly, and I'll tell you lots of uh, uh, times that they have quoted Mola. I'm just going to start off with the slide, uh, which has made an enormous impression upon me. Sayyidina Mufaddal Sayfuddin Aqa in 2020, on the opening of the Aligarh University Centenary Gate, quoted Prophet, uh, uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, stating that seeking knowledge is a duty obligated upon every Muslim man and woman. Within the Islamic traditions, the very purpose behind acquiring education is to put one's knowledge into practice, therefore by benefiting others. Knowledge put into practice has the capacity to solve all problems, and knowledge bridges the distances between people and brings hearts and minds. And in fact, 
on the basis of these tenets, we have designed a program for the Iraqi medical fraternity. It should be noted that they have gone through 30 years of austerity in learning. Two generations have lost out because of the war with Iran and subsequently the Kuwait war that has deprived them from being able to uplift their knowledge, be able to contribute at the medicinal platform and also be able to travel around the world to participate in learning. I guess the, uh, my journey with the Iraqi pro program started with uh, in 2019 when Huzur al Sharif decided to travel for Kun Safar. And, um, and one, of, one of my added is that every morning I used to look at the news of Huzur al and, and there were channels where you can see Mola live. And it happened that one Iraqi doctor who was a cardiologist happened to be just looking inquisitively over my shoulder. And he said, Huzafa, have you traveled plans to go to Iraq? I said, yes, inshallah. And it was, I, I told him that I was going to travel with, um, to my Mola uh, who's in Iraq. And I was going to be doing performing the ziyarah of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Now, this gentleman uh, had good affiliation with University of Baghdad and the medical city of there. And what resulted was a phone call within half an hour. And look, they have so much affection of, for Mola Aqa <laughs> Sayyidina Muhammad Burhan. He said, Sultan al Bahra is arriving uh, uh, to Iraq, and we understand you are going to be part of the group. We would be very grateful if part of uh, time you spend in Iraq, would there be an opportunity to come to Baghdad to give a lecture uh, to us? And at this point in time, I was a little bit gobsmacked. And I said to myself, wow, look at that. So I couldn't say no. I uh, and, and immediately what we did was when we went to Iraq, I went to Karbala Sharif, Najaf, and from Najaf they came to collect me to go to Baghdad. And in Baghdad, we did, what we had designed was a full one-day course for them on interstitial lung disease at the medical city. My colleagues and myself, including radiologists, pathologists, uh, other consultants, designed a full program, which del we delivered over about seven hours, and we did a virtual multidisciplinary meeting with them with live cases. It was very well received. The Royal College of Physicians in London supported it. They got six CME credits. And they were very, it was very humbling to go there. And, and moreover, the food was delicious because they laid out a treat, massive. The Iraqis know how to do it large. That resulted in enormous collaborations. And, and, and with the Dua of Uzurala, we started developing where, uh, a program where their doctors could come and visit us at the Bristol Interstitial Lung Disease Service. That's where I work and run. And we started supporting their physicians in becoming more attuned to lung fibrosis, started training them up, doing virtual MDTs, advising them on complex cases. And it happened that the program, I mean, it was great. It, it was good. And at one point in time, I just happened to say to them, wouldn't it be great if we could get your young medical students to come and visit us in Bristol and work with us? And lo and behold, we had the Iraqi UK Medical Selective uh, Student Elective Program, and that has been running for from 2021 to 2023. And you have to understand that this program is a new concept. It is a non Iraqi organization, Safi Burhani Medical Organization, who, is, who are supporting their students. And it comes under the umbrella of Sultan al Bahra Aqa Sayyidina Mufaddal Saifuddin. And what we did was we asked in my hospital, are there any Iraqi doctors? Because we wanted to get them on board. And lo and behold, I had Four Iraqi doctors, Dr. Iwad Haider Thikr al Watar, Professor Hashim Hashim, Dr. Zamil Faisal, and a non Iraqi who was a Syrian who wanted to be an Iraqi, said, We will all contribute to the program of learning. 
for the Iraqi students. And what we did was we designed a, a, a four-week program in general medicine, urology, cardiology, endocrinology, and respiratory medicine. And a program in respiratory medicine that Bristol would like would look like something like this. And what it involved is the students getting a, ability to travel all the way from Iraq and come and spend time with us. And we really worked hard to make a phenomenal experience even better. And the reason why we made it better is this. What we did was we got another, uh, I got a colleague in Yeovil who decided to take another batch of students. So we amalgamated under SBMA and we got 16 students every year to come to us from Iraq. There's a competition that runs Iraq wide. Last year, 80 people applied for the competition, wrote an essay why they should go to Bristol or Yeovil. And they came, they've come every year for the past three years between August and September. Uh, this year, we did four weeks program and we got four students in each center per month. So 16 altogether. And they have had a phenomenal time. And we really worked our cotton socks off to make them feel welcome. We then, suddenly the word got out that SBMA supporting uh, lots of teaching. Uh, could they be your representatives who could come and teach in Iraq? And the reason we got excited about this was that in uh, uh, January 2022, uh, there were some new guidelines in lung fibrosis that have just come out. Being the lead in lung fibrosis, they said, Josefa, would you like to come and give us a talk on progressive fibrosis interstitial lung disease, a new landscape? And I did. Bells and whistles. Uh, and the important thing was the University of Baghdad said, Josefa, can you give a, a talk about legacy of learning? And that is, I don't know if you can see behind me, there's a slide. And I had Aqa Sayyidna Taisif Rizm Mullah, Ridwanul Ali, Sayyidna Muhammad Burhanun Ridwanul Ali, Aqa Sayyidna Muhammad Saifuddin Mullah, Tallahu Rasha, photograph up there. And I had said that my legacy of learning revolves around the du'ad who have been contributing uh, to your Iraqi. Uh, history and structures, and they all recognized Mona. So that was amazing. And the students automatically had enormous affections. They were a full auditorium packed, and they were listening to what you were saying. And these, some of the, at the top slides show the students who just waited to take a photograph. It's very kind and humbling. At the bottom panel uh, is the, uh, the dean of the uh, medical school and the president of University of Baghdad who came to welcome us. And all because for the love and affection of Mullah. <laughs> the second thing we did was Al Amid University. So Al Atabat Al Abbasia has uh, been investing in medicine, in particularly in education, and uh, and also in hospitals. And Al Amid University, there are two universities that they run. One is Al Amid in Karbala and Al Kafil in Najaf. Al Amid University is this, um, and it looks like a pretty much a resort on the outskirts of Karbala, only 20 minutes away, and the lecture halls look like tents. It's a beautiful campus they have, and it's very well managed and landscaped. And they invited me to give a week, uh, on behalf of SBMA, a week uh, teaching on uh, respiratory medicine, lung fibrosis, pulmonary hypertension, anatomy, all of it. And these were some of the people who welcomed us. The bonus about doing it in Karbala is Imam Hussain alayhi salam is just in front of you. And after every day, you go to go for Ziyarat, Abbas al Amdal, and Imam Hussain alayhi salam. And we got that barakat every day in the morning, early morning, in mid afternoon, and in the evening. But they made us feel very welcome and we were very humbled. Now, Al Amid University said, because of the students, we're very grateful. Could you do more for them? And what we have been doing now is that we have been uh, we have been actually mentoring students every week. I have five students from Al Amid University. They join me virtually, and I support their learning and so on. It's a very good program. It's going to pay dividends, and it's already. Uh, 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 raising the banner of Safi Burhani Medical Association in Iraq.
The final bit of work that we've been doing is with the Royal College of Physicians. In the United States, you have to do the exams. In the United Kingdom, you have to become a member of the Royal College of Physicians. And one of the most important things you do is you do these clinical examinations called PACES. So what we did was we basically went to Suleymaniyah, uh, Kurdistan, Baghdad, and Karbala to set up these examination centers. Uh, Suleymaniyah is amazing. I would well, would well recommend that you go to Suleymaniyah. These panels show the examiners, and it was very, I felt very humbled <laughs> and privileged. I was the only non Arabs, uh, non-Arabic speaking physician who had been invited to come over. In Baghdad, we were welcome. We gave lectures. In Karbala, we went to Al-Kafil Hospital and we set up the exams accordingly there. We also were welcomed uh, by uh, Sayyid Ahmed Safi um, in Al-Atabat Al-Abbasiya. And this was outside the Haram of Abbas Alamdar. And he, we basically uh, uh, were invited to go there. And we met uh, Sayyid Ahmed Safi, who immediately went to seeing me, said the Sultan al Bahra had only arrived a few weeks ago. This was in March uh, 2023. We, and I, I said, my, and of course, I had gone to Karbala this time around with Mullah Raza. So I said, uh, Sayyid Ahmed Safi, Mullah has sent me over to do khidmat of your university. Uh, and and Emir. So it, in, in a way, we were very, very humbled by the whole process. But uh, Amid Hospital and uh, is run by al Atabat Al-Abbasiyah, and there are lots of more projects that we are hoping to entertain. Now, moving on to the last thing. We are going to be organizing electives in Karbala, inshallah. Mullah has looked at this program and has given us Raza Mubarak, and the program is going to involve Safi Burhani Medical Association, UK and Europe, and America is going to come on board. And we are going to be sending two medical students from United Kingdom and two medical students from United States to work in El Kathil Hospital for four weeks. Now, their hospital is really centered over surgery, but they have medicine also. They are going to our students have got to be final year medical students, and the aim is that once they've given the exams, they go and do khidmat up there and do ziyarat of Imam Hussain alayhi salam and Abbas al and Imam Amir al muminin So the idea would be that they would get the barakat before they become physicians. And this program is, we've got a whole proposal and objective. The stumbling blocks we have, al Kafil has agreed, we are going to be publicizing this in the United Kingdom, as well as in the United States and Canada. And we're going to really going to make it happen. The stumbling blocks is uh, uh, we are trying to negotiate, inshallah, with Faisal Husseini to allow our students to stay there for two to four weeks. And that, inshallah, will happen. I see Bram Baisab in the, in, in the audience, and I'm sure he's taking notes. Shukran, Bram Baisab. Anyway, uh, 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 <laughs> the final thing, summarizing whole. So we are looking for two American and two UK and Europe final year medical students to do elective in Karbala. Uh, we are uh, we're setting up PACES centers. We, uh, I'm going inshallah back in November to set it up in Nasaria, Baghdad, Karbala and Suleymaniyah. We are hoping to engage with more medical teaching programs with Al Kathil and Al Amid University in Najaf and Karbala respectively. And we are hoping to expand the elective program in the UK and United States for Iraqi medical students. So we're hoping to get more. Uh, we need uh, the Americans to support them coming to the uh, United States. Uh, visas is always an issue, but I think that can be uh, overcome. And the fact that we are getting them into the United Kingdom, I'm sure that uh, the Americans would welcome them in the United States. So at the end, this whole program has been a bit of a dream for me in delivering it. I feel very humble uh, with the ability to deliver it and the only, as I say, the designer, the orchestra, orchestrator of this is Akam Mufaddal Saifuddin Mola. So in the end, Ameen. Thank you. Jose this is uh, Amr Jamali. 
Uh, uh, I, hi. <laughs> my, my, my biggest, uh, I'm the biggest fan of Amber. <laughs> <laughs> Likewise. Um, wow. Wow. What an amazing, amazing journey that you described. What an amazing accomplishment that you've accomplished. We're so proud of you, and, and we're so excited that you're taking part with our organization. I think the brotherhood of the two organizations can really be synergistic and can really, inshallah, um, uh, help grow this beyond what either organization could do uh, alone. So thank you so much for uh, taking the time. I think it's about probably around 9 o'clock there or so, taking the time and uh, presenting all of your uh, hard work. Um, that brings us to the, sorry, was that what you were saying? 